Good morning. This is Elder Michael Stivick from Higher Ground Temple at 203 Vine Street in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, welcome to my Facebook page. I know I'm royalty. That's right. I know I'm royalty. Do you know you're royalty? You ought to because you are a child of God. You are a child of the King of Kings. Not just a child of the King, amen, but a child of the King of Kings. The child, the, the, the King that all the other kings answer to, amen. The one that created all things, the one that maintains all things, the one that sustains all things, including you and me. So I praise God. I thank Him for waking me up. Welcome here to July 6th. 2020. None of us was really guaranteed, none of us was promised, none of us was assured on the day we were born that we were going to make it to July 6th, 2020. And yet, here we are, blessed of the Lord, waking up today. Amen. I woke up today with a little bit of a different than it's been for the last couple of weeks. Amen. Because I had the last three weeks off. And you know what? I could have woke up this morning going, oh man, I got to go back to work again. Uh, Darry Baker Connor, good to see you on there. Good to see you on there. Hope you are having a blessed day. I know you've been leading a blessed life, so I'm going to trust that you are. I know you're following the Lord, so I know that you are blessed waking up this morning. And I was just saying, you know, I woke up this morning, July 6, 2020, a little different than the last few weeks because I had the last three weeks all from work. Amen. And I could have woke up this morning going, oh man, I got to go back to work again today. And I'm going to be honest, I had a little bit of that in my spirit when I woke up, but I quickly realized, just like God blessed me to wake up and have the last three weeks weeks off. Amen. He has blessed me to wake up. Amen. And still be able to go into work today. So I thank God even for the opportunity to go into work. I thank God that he gave me a job to go into. That it's not one that I wake up in the morning and I dread going into. It's not a job that I go into and I see no purpose. I see no bigger plan in it other than a paycheck. Amen. I thank God that he gave me an opportunity to go into a job that I enjoy working with people that I enjoy working with. Um, and, and, and getting a chance, amen, to interact with a lot of people over the course of the day, to minister so to some people, amen, that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to minister to had it not been for this job. So I thank God. Uh, for waking me up this morning. I thank God that he woke me up with a purpose. Amen. And I thank God that I had the opportunity. Amen. And that this was one of the purposes that he woke me up with. Because here we are, we're at 802 on a Monday morning and I'm getting to share a word. Um, I'm getting to share a word with God's people. Amen. So I thank God for the opportunity for that. And, and I got a word here that came to me, that came to me and I tell you, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's not, it's not a word that I came up with myself, um, but I've been studying for some other things, and, and I, as I was studying for something else, I got this word out of it, amen? And, and it's, a, it's, it's a word that is near and dear to my heart. Um, I'm, I'm going to go from, uh, we're not going to be reading from, but it's really, it all kind of centers around Romans 8 and 28, amen? It, it says that, that we know that God works all things to good, for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Amen. Don Holland, my coming on. Welcome, my old friend from high school. Amen. Jerry Stivick, my lovely wife, and Pamela Vasquez coming on this morning. Good to see you all today. And we got a word today. Amen. We got a word to encourage you today. Um, one of my favorite scriptures, as I was saying, Romans 8 and 28, says that, And God works all things to good for those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I've, I've used this scripture many times over, over my weeks on here, and y'all may be getting tired of hearing it, but I just want you to know it's the truth, and that's why I keep saying it. Amen. So we're looking at today. And we're going to be looking at the book of Acts. Um, so if, you, if you'd like to read along with these things, just go to Acts 27 and 28 is where we're going to be coming from. And I'll give you the specific scriptures as we get to each point. Amen. But we're going to Acts 27 and 28. Amen. And this is, this is for one of my favorite folks in all the scriptures. Amen. Obviously, Jesus number one. But I'm talking about my, my friend, my, my, my boy here, Paul. Amen. Um, Paul, who used to be Saul of Tarsus. Amen. We're looking at Paul today. I mean, we're looking at some of the things that Paul went through. And I and I love Paul because when we, when we look at Paul, Paul went through some things, amen. And Paul had that true, um, a true servant spirit, amen. It wasn't about the glory. It wasn't about him. It was about nothing but bringing the gospel, amen, to God's people, amen. To anyone who was willing to receive it, he was willing to share it. I want to be like Paul, amen. Now, not the beginning of Paul, Maria Vicente coming on. Good to see you this morning, Maria. Um, and it's not, not the beginnings of 
wasn't Paul. Not when he was Saul. I don't want to be that. Um, but with Saul, this is when we look at the life of Saul here. We're going to be looking at the very end, amen, kind of of the ministry of Saul on this, of Paul. This is where Paul... You know, we all know he started out persecuting the church, right? He ended up, he was rounding up Christians, throwing women, children, men, everybody into prison, amen, until that fateful day on the road to Damascus where Jesus spoke to him, amen. And from that point on, just as just as Paul, uh, when he was Saul, was zealous for persecuting the church, amen, just as he was zealous, he did it, he did it with revelry, amen, he didn't just do what he was told to do, he went above and beyond, he said, if I'm in, I'm in all the way, amen, and, and I love it, because see, now, now, where that led him to do wrong early on, amen, we see that, um, we see that what happened is, um, after he became Paul, after he met Jesus, now that same zealous nature, amen, he went after it the same way, amen, Sh sharing the word and the life, um, and the purpose amen of Jesus Christ to save us all from our sin to give us all a chance to get back into a relationship with God and, and here's and here's Paul he's he's gone through he's he's traveled all over the known world at the time sharing about Jesus he, he went to the Jews first and 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 sometimes they'd be like look stone this man get him out of our city they'd rise up against him and and he would then he'd go to the Gentiles he'd say look I'm giving this word to amen to anybody who's gonna listen and so he's done his thing and he's been out there and, and a lot of the a lot of the Jewish leaders, he was a Jewish leader of Jewish leaders himself um, coming up. He was a Pharisee, amen. He was very legalistic. He knew the law. He knew the word frontwards and backwards. And so what happened now? Those same people that are just like he was, amen, back when he was Saul, now he's preaching to them in the, in the, in the, uh, in the synagogues, amen. And, there, and many of them are rejecting them. Many of them are stirring up the cities against them and chasing them out of there. And now our boy Paul here, as we're coming up to our lesson today, our bar, our boy Paul here went back to Jerusalem, back to his hometown. Sister Tanga, good to see you on here. Hope you are doing well this morning. So our boy, our boy Paul now, here goes back to Jerusalem. Amen. And here he is in his, in his hometown where he grew up. Amen. And what do they want to do? They want to arrest him. They want to have him killed. They want to have him thrown in prison. That They got all kinds of plans. And Paul, Paul goes through like five different trials. Amen. These folks, the Sanhedrin. Amen. The very Pharisees. Amen. That he studied amongst. Amen. His, his boys, his posse, his, his, his friends from back in the day, his ride or die fellas, his foxhole buddies, amen, when he was growing up. Now they're all trying to get him killed, all trying to get him thrown into prison. And when that doesn't work, they start making plans. Well, we'll have them transport him from here to there, and we're going to kill him on the way, amen. If, if the law isn't going to kill him, we'll take it into our own hands. And, and so our boy Paul, man, now, so now after four or five times, amen, the case has been presented against him for why he's stirring up uh, problems in, in the Roman Empire, why he's stirring up problems in Jerusalem. And every time the judge says, no, nah, I'm not seeing anything, I'm not seeing anything. So now Paul finally says, you know what? I'm sick of this nonsense. I appeal to Caesar. Take me to Caesar. He says, I wanted to get to Rome anyway. Rome is the center of the world. Rome is, Rome is where everything gets out to the world. So he said, I want to get to Rome anyway. I want to spread the word there. So why? So they can carry it out to the rest of the world. Amen. This is where our boy Paul's at. And the interesting thing is, the judge who he appeals to for Caesar, he says, but, what, but, but what's this thing? He says, hey, he would have been set free had he not appealed to Caesar. Why? Because, yeah, he put himself in jeopardy because now he's got to go to Rome. He's, he's got to face another trial trial. Amen. But this is the thing. God called him to go there. He said, I got to be there anyway. This may be my ticket. The ticket may not be first class on a voyage. Amen. The ticket to Rome was in chains. The, the ticket to Rome was under guard. Amen. But it didn't matter. God told him to go. And he said, that's my ticket to Rome. Amen. And, and Paul goes through some things on this trip to Rome, amen, and that's what we're going to be looking at here is Paul's trip to Rome, amen, and and you see what the title was on here, it might have felt like, but, amen, because, because we're seeing some of the things Rome, that, that Paul went through, we've been through them ourselves in our life, we've probably been through every one of these things, not specifically these things, but, but things very much like them, amen, but, why did God have us go through them? That's what we're looking at today. We're looking at the but today. Amen. It may look like but. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start out. We're going to start out with Acts um, chapter 27. And we're going to look at verses 39 through 44. So again, that's chapter 27. 
we're going to pick up at chapter 39, verse 44. And where we're picking up at here, Paul is on his way to Rome, amen? And, and his ship, amen, has come across a storm, amen? And this storm is driving this ship all over the place, amen? And, and, and Paul and everybody's panicky and everybody's worrying. And Paul, amen, is the voice of reason. Paul is the voice of calm on this ship, amen? And so what happens now in chapter 27, um, verse 39? They're in this storm, amen. It says, when daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchors, they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the fourth sail to the wind and made for the beach, amen? But the ship struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move, but the stern, which is the back of the boat, was broken to pieces by the pounding of the surf. Amen. The waves are crashing on the back of this boat, and slowly it is smashing this boat to pieces from back to front, amen? And the soldiers, here you go, the soldiers planned to kill the prisoners, all the prisoners, not just one prisoner, all the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming away and escaping. But the centurion wanted to spare what? Wanted to spare Paul's life. Amen. So, so he kept them from carrying out their plan. Kept the centurions from carrying out their plan to kill all the prisoners. Why? Because he wanted to spare Paul's life life. Amen. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and to get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached land safely. So what's this? So what's this section of our lesson called? It's called, it might have felt like a shipwreck, but, amen, it might have felt like a shipwreck, but, amen, so this is what we're looking at. It might, th we have all gone through days, right, where we're sailing along, amen, and everything seems to be going well when suddenly what happens? A storm has come up upon us, amen. It, it might have been it might have been a shipwreck in your health, amen. It might have been a, a shipwreck in your marriage, amen. It might have been a shipwreck, amen. You, you might you have all of a sudden found yourself unemployed. You might have found yourself, I, I know some folks found themselves homeless. I know some folks found themselves helpless. My cousin, Jackie Stevich, coming on. Good to see you this morning. And this is what I want to encourage you with you. As you went through those things, and, and, and if you haven't yet, amen, you're, you're, you're going to, amen. If you're not going through it right now, you went through it before. If you didn't go through it before, you're about to go through it. Amen. We've all got some shipwrecks, amen, that come up in our lives, amen. And, and, and what's the reason for it? It might have felt like a shipwreck, but you were there to save somebody's life. Amen. And I'm going to share, I'm going to share some folks testimonies and I'm not going to use names here, but I'm going to tell you, I know a woman uh, met through our church um, who, who had been homeless for a period of time. Amen. Had, had grown up, had, had a good job. Everything was going well, lost the job, got sick, ended up homeless. And what happened? Ended up in a homeless shelter. It looked like her life was a shipwreck. Amen. It looked like her life had fallen apart. But yet, why was she there? Because you know what? As she was in that shelter, amen, she noticed the living conditions in that shelter. She noticed the way that the people living in that shelter, amen, the way that they had been treated, the lifestyle that they had to live, not just not just because of their problem with their finances, but even the way the people running the shelter treated these folks amen but she was there amen her life looked like a shipwreck amen but yet she was there to save someone's life because by her being in that situation amen by her being in that situation she started a board and they allowed her to start a board of the residents of the people who who stayed in that shelter amen to to have a voice amen in how things were run to allow them to have a voice and to improve amen their their own situation. Amen. You had, you had people who, who were feeling hopeless, who were feeling lost, who knows where that path was going to take them. Amen. But yet she was there in her shipwreck. Amen. In her shipwreck, all these other people, amen, they were saved. Their lives were saved. Their lives were improved. Amen. What? Through 
her shipwreck. Amen. So, so if you've gone through a shipwreck in your life, if you're going through a shipwreck in your life, or if you go through one in the future, as you're hitting it, just keep in mind that God has you there to save someone else's life. Amen. Just like Paul on this boat. Amen. Paul on this boat. He, he was there. His life was put in jeopardy. He was there under pretenses, under false pretenses to start with. He shouldn't have even been there. He didn't do anything to deserve being there. He didn't do anything to deserve being in that storm. He didn't do anything to deserve being in that boat that is being beaten, amen, and torn apart and ripped apart and destroyed by the waves, amen. He didn't do anything to warrant, amen, having his life put in peril. But why was he there? He was there to save the lives of someone else. Amen. So, so as you go through a shipwreck series in your life, amen. I know folks that ended up in the hospital. Gentleman had a stroke, amen. But why was he there? He was there because his roommate needed saving, amen. In the hospital, he got a chance to preach the word, amen, to his roommates, right? So it may look like a shipwreck, amen. You, It may feel like a shipwreck. If it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, we would say it's a duck, but not when it comes to faith, because, because that duck, amen, can be an eagle if we believe that duck is an eagle, amen. So next time you're going through a shipwreck cycle, amen, next time things are falling apart around you, next time the waves are beating on you, Remember, you're not there just to be there. Amen. God has a plan and a purpose. God works all things to good for those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So you are there. Amen. Not just to work out good for yourself, but you're there to save somebody else. And this is right. And this is our boy, Paul, man. This is our boy, Paul, one of my favorite fellows in all the scriptures. Amen. But that's not even enough. That's not even the end. That's not even all he had to go through on this trip to Rome. Amen. Was what happens that that ship gets smashed, everybody saved, everybody makes it to shore safely. And we're going to look at what happens to poor Paul next, man. Paul was going through, but why was Paul going through? Paul was going through because God knew that Paul could handle it. I go through sometimes because God knows I can handle it. You go through sometimes because God knows that you can handle it. So what does God have? Amen. For our boy Paul next. Amen. For that, we're going to jump up to chapter 28 of Acts. So we're looking at Acts chapter 28, and we're going to start at verse 3. Amen. And, and, and here, so now, they've gotten to the land. It's raining. It's cold. Um, everybody's, everybody's just trying to get their bearings, and they decide to build a fire. So what happens to Paul as they're building this fire? Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, a viper driven out by the heat fastened itself on his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, so that thing was in there deep and good because it was hanging from, he's shaking his hand, and that thing's just dangling there. It says, when the islanders saw this, they said to each other, this man must be a murderer, amen? They say he must be a murderer for he escaped from the sea. Justice has not allowed him to live. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their mind and thought he was a god. Amen. Now, here's the thing. Now, here's where we see, right? So, it may feel like a venomous snake bite, amen? It may be painful. It may be scary. It may feel like a snake bite, but what was the reason for it, amen? The people now had faith in something. It wasn't the right God just yet, but it started them on the, tra on the path. And it says, there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us into his home for three days, entertained us hospitably. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. When this had happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways and when we were ready to fail... They furnished us with the supplies that we needed. Amen. So here we have Paul, right? That snake bite, it latched on in front of everybody. 
Anybody out there have a public humiliation, amen? Anybody, anybody ever lose a job because they messed up on the job and had to go tell everybody, I lost my job, I'm unemployed. Anybody ever been behind on their mortgage, behind on their light bill, and very, and it became a very public thing, amen? Where the friends, the neighbors, amen, know what's going on in your life, amen? So, so it's these very public things. Anybody ever go through trouble in your marriage? And everybody knows you're going through trouble in your marriage. Amen. And it felt like a snake bite. Amen. It burned. It stung. You you were worried about it just sucking the very life out of you. Amen. But why were you there? Why would you have to go through that very public snake bite? Amen. Because what, did, what happened? Why did Paul have to go through the snake bite? Paul had to go through the snake bite. What? To build someone else's faith. Amen. You may not even realize it. I'm going to say you may have gone through some marital problems. I know some folks that have been through some marital problems and it became public knowledge. Amen. And, and, and people knew about it that they really didn't want to know about it. Amen. But yet what happened? It became, amen, it built somebody else's faith. Amen. Why? Because they knew what you went through in your marriage. They knew when you went through unemployment. They saw you come through it by faith in Jesus Christ. They saw you hang in there through that trouble in your marriage. They saw you unemployed and saw you wake up with every morning with faith and hope. So what happened? So later on, when they woke up unemployed one day, as they were sitting there thinking, oh man, that poor fella. And they woke up in your situation one day, they said, well, wait a minute now. That Stibbit guy, that Vicente lady, that 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 uh, Darry Baker Connor, that Pamela Vasquez, I remember when this happened to them. And you know, wait a minute. Come to think of it, they woke up smiling every day. They woke up every day looking forward to things, just knowing that things were going to get better. And you know what? That helped those people that saw you go through it, that very public, amen, snake bite. That, that helped them when they found themselves in that situation. Because they said, you know what? They got through by their faith in Jesus. I can get through by my faith in Jesus as well. I can trust and obey and go through. I don't need to go out and steal. I don't need to go out and do anything dishonest, amen, to get through this season of unemployment. Amen. I don't, I don't need to go out and cheat on my wife. I don't need to go out and seek a divorce. I don't need to go through all these things. Why? Because I saw Maria Vicente go through it and come out the other side. I saw Pamela Vasquez go through it and come out the other side. Do it gracefully. Do it with joy. Do it with a smile. Amen. So when that snake, amen, when he sinks his, his teeth, when he sinks those fangs, into your hand. Amen. Just keep on smiling and shake it off. That's right. Here comes Sherry Taylor. Good to see you on here. Sherry Taylor, we're looking at today, Sherry, at some things that our boy Paul used to be Saul of Tarsus had to go through. Amen. At the, toward the end of his missionary trips, toward the end of his walk. Amen. As he's on his way to Rome to get put through trial once again, Paul had a lot of trials he had to go through. And on his way, we're seeing some of those things that he had to go through. That's right. It looked like a shipwreck. He was in a shipwreck. The waves beat that boat to pieces, but it happened so that he could save lives. And that shipwreck that you have gone through, you it went you went through it, amen, to save somebody else's life. We looked at Paul had that snake hanging on his hand, right? He shook it off into the fire, amen, very publicly in front of everybody. Everybody thought he must be a murderer because why do these things keep happening to him? But why? Because of what happened, he, it, he went through it to build somebody else's faith, to save somebody else through their faith so that other folks could be healed, what? By faith, amen? So we look at our boy Paul, man, and, and Paul goes through. We've seen the shipwreck. We've seen the snake bite. And then what happens when he gets to Rome, amen? It, it's not a whole lot of fun when he's, he's not on Roman holiday, amen? He's not going to the Colosseum. He's not going to the Sistine Chapel. He's not traveling around Italy, going up to the Tuscany region, having some good food, drinking some good wine. He's not having a good time when he gets to Rome. It is not a vacation when he gets there. So we're going to jump down to chapter 28 of, Ro of Acts. I'm sorry. Um, chapter 28 of Acts, and we're going to look at verses 16 through 23. So again, this is going to be Acts chapter 28, 
16 through 23. And it says, when we got to Rome, Paul was allowed to live by himself, but with a soldier to guard him. Amen. So he's under lock and key. He's on lockdown. He can't go wherever he wants and do whatever he wants to do. He's there under guard. Amen. He's not free to go all the places he thinks he should be able to go. He's not free to do all the things he thinks he should be able to do. And it says three days later, he called together the leaders of the Jews When they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. And and I'm going to just paraphrase a couple of things here. It says, they found no reason, amen, against me, but yet I appealed to Caesar. Amen. Donna Hawkins, Stitch Thomas coming on. Good to see you both. And, and, And it says that for this reason, I have been brought to you in chains. And what happened? It says they replied. So this is the other Jew. These are the Jewish leaders in Rome. Amen. As Paul is under lock and key, it may have felt like prison. It may have felt like prison. Amen. But Paul was there to preach the gospel. So we see Paul in chains here. We see Paul bound here. Amen. But yet he was there not to be bound. Amen. But to freely preach the word of God. Um, It says they replied, we have not received any letters from Judea concerning you. And none of the brothers who have come here have reported or said anything about you, but we want to hear about what your views are. For we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect, against this sect that's talking against Jesus and those that follow Jesus. Amen. So here he's in chains, and this has prompted folks to ask him, what is it about this Jesus, amen, that makes you willing to go through all this? So he had to be there in chains, amen, to get people to ask him, to get people to seek, what is it, amen, that has got you willing to be sitting here in chains, And so Paul explains to them, and it says, They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers. So because he's there and changed, foes are seeking him out. They came in larger numbers to the place where he was staying. From morning till evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. It says, Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. Amen. And I'm going to stop right there because this is what I want, I want to encourage you with. It may feel like prison, but you're there to preach the gospel. Amen. And the first thing I want to say is you're there to preach the gospel. Amen. You can't make anybody believe the gospel. You can't make anybody believe the good news. You can't make anybody accept Jesus, but you got to do what you can do. And that is preach the gospel. That is sharing about the goodness of Jesus Christ in your life. That's what you're called to do. And that's all that you are called to do. Amen. But we see here again. We saw Paul in chapter 27 of Acts. We see him in a boat. It is beaten. It is battered. It is fallen apart. He did nothing to deserve to be there. So why is he in this shipwreck? He was there to save the lives of other people. So if you're going through a shipwreck in your life, amen, keep in mind, you are there to save the lives of other people, amen. We, we see he had that snake hanging from his hand next, right? As soon as he gets off that ship, he's got a snake hanging from his hand. Looks like it's going to kill him. But remember, you, 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 it may look like a snake bite, amen, but you are there, amen, to build the faith of other people, amen? So so be encouraged by this, and it may look like prison, right? Because Paul can't go anywhere, everywhere he wants to go. He can't do everything he wants to do. It looks like prison, amen? But yet he is there to preach the gospel, to preach the good news to people who needed to hear it, amen? Not everybody accepted it, and never is there a time when everybody that you that you preach to is going to accept it. Amen. But those that were meant to accept it, those that had a heart ready to accept it, they accepted it. And you know what? Who knows, too? It, you know, that word, amen, there, there may have been some people that Paul preached to while he was there in prison that he didn't ever see except Jesus Christ. But who knows what are the seeds that he planted while he was there in prison didn't come back and win that person over later on. So, so be encouraged out there. 
you're gonna you're gonna go through some things in life you're gonna have some shipwrecks you're gonna have some times when it looks like some all or certain areas of your life are falling apart but trust in this you're going through it amen you're gonna make it through it why did paul go through it i said it before because god knew he could handle it so god's putting you through it amen because he knows you can handle it, and he knows that by you handling it it's gonna save somebody else's life you you may have go through that public, very public, amen, pain, that very public um, distress in your life, whether it's losing a job, marriage falling apart, financial problems, health problems that everybody sees, but yet why? You're there. You go through it to build somebody else's faith. Again, God knew that Paul could handle it, but God knew that there were people on that island that needed to see him go through it. Why? So that they could have faith that they could be healed too. So that folks, when they see you go through that snake bite, when they get bit, they can know they can make it through. They can walk through in confidence. They can keep smiling. They can have hope and not despair. Amen. And there may be times when you feel like you're in prison, when you're going, man, I des- I'm ready for bigger than this. God has bigger than this for me. Why am I still in this church? Why am I still on this job? Why haven't I made it down to North Carolina, out to Colorado? I wanted to move to California. Why am I in this place? You're in that place, amen, to preach the gospel, amen. Not to save folks, because nobody else can save anybody except for the Holy Ghost, amen. But you're there to preach the gospel. You're there to give people hope. You're there to plant seeds, to water, to weed, to prepare the soil. So all these things as you're going through, I want you to be encouraged, amen. You are going to make it through. How do I know? Because I know you've gone through some things already, and yet here you sit, on July 6, 2020, you have made it through 100% of your worst days. And the next one that comes along, you're going to make it through that too. But you know what? You're going to encourage somebody else through your trials. So share, amen, what the Lord has done in your life. Share what the Lord has brought you through. Amen. Because it's there to save somebody's life. It's there to build somebody's faith. And it's there to plant the seed of the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. So here we are. We're coming up. We're actually at 830 now. So I just want to thank you all for tuning in. I'm back to work now. I got to be there at 9 o'clock. So I can't go real long over today. But I want to thank you all for tuning in. I want to encourage you to share this word on your Facebook page. Because every one of us know some folks that have gone through. Every one of us knows some folks that are going through or are about to go through. This is a word, amen, that every person out there needs to hear, amen. So share this on your Facebook page. Um, certainly, if you have any any questions, as always, we've got the email button at the top of the I Know I'm Royalty page. Email any questions or prayer requests that you have. Um, God bless you all. I love you. I can't wait to see you all. I've seen some of you recently out at church now that we're out at, um, we're, at we're having church on Sunday mornings out at the Croc Center. 1865 Harrison Avenue in Camden, New Jersey. Would love to see all of you out there, but I'm glad that I have been able to start getting to see some of you out there. Um, God bless you all. I hope to see you all in the future. Um, But until then, I just praise God for your lives. Thank you for tuning in. You have a blessed day, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. God bless.